Hello and welcome. I'm Amritan Shirai and you're watching Law of the Land on Rajya Sabha TV. Today we bring to you the Whistleblower Protection Amendment Bill 2015. To discuss the issue, I have with me Mrs. Anjali Bharadwaj, member NCPRI and senior advocate Mr. Anil B. Deva. Now for the headlines. No disclosures by whistleblowers will be allowed relating to cabinet papers and privileged information. No person will be required to render any assistance in any inquiry under the law if it impacts exemptions. The proposed amendments also discourage leaks by officers of the government. No disclosures by whistleblowers can be made relating to cabinet papers, privileged information and security of the country if the proposed amendment to the existing whistleblower law is approved by the Parliament. The Whistleblowers Protection Amendment Bill 2015 seeks to plug shortcomings which could adversely affect the functioning of the government. The Whistleblowers Protection Bill was taken up in 2011 during the UPA rule with a view to strengthening the safeguards against disclosures which may negatively affect the sovereignty and integrity of the country. But the bill could not be passed. Now the NDA government proposes to carry out necessary amendments in the Act, so as to include safeguards against disclosures which may adversely affect the sovereignty and integrity of the country. All the amendments were justified because these amendments are removing an inconsistency in the rule of law. You see, these very information they are not allowed to be disclosed under the Right to Information Act. So under one act, they are not allowed to be disclosed, while this act without amendment was allowing them to be disclosed. If you read the present amendments, you will see that they are verbatim the same as Section 8 of the, of the Right to Information Act. The proposed amendment rules out any disclosure if the information is likely to affect India's sovereignty and integrity, its security, strategic, scientific or economic interests, or foreign relations. Disclosure will not be allowed if information leads to incitement of an offence. No disclosure can be made of cabinet papers, including records of deliberations of the Council of Ministers, Secretaries and other officers except as provided for under the Right to Information Act. No public interest disclosure can be made if any court or tribunal has directed the information be forbidden from public disclosure. No disclosure is to be made of information that could cause the breach of privilege of the parliament or state legislature. The national security is not uh, such, a, such an issue that it happens in, say, law courts or, or in some organization where contractors and the officers are together, they are making 8 to 10 crores or even 20 crores, 100 crores. So they have nothing to do with national security. But this word can be misused by the government, can be misused by the competent authority. So I would suggest that these broad, broad terms like national security, national sovereignty, unity and integrity may be used less and less, it will be better. The Whistleblowers Amendment Bill 2015 has been introduced to give effect to the earlier amendments which could not be passed in the previous sessions. The bill aims to provide protection to those who expose corruption. The Whistleblowers Protection Act empowers any public servant or any other person, including a non-governmental organization, to make public interest disclosures before a competent authority. The law was brought about to provide protection to persons making disclosure of corruption, willful misuse of power or discretion by any public servant from harassment, besides keeping the identity of the whistleblower secure. The disclosure applies irrespective of the provisions of the Official Secrets Act 1923. Dipali Pandit for Rajya Sabha Television. The same exemptions have been made in the RTI law. So why is this not right? So the question to you. If the same exemptions are there in the RTI, then why is it not correct 
to have the same exemptions in the, the whistleblower. The object of the RTI Act is to get information from the government. The object of the Whistleblower Act is to expose corruption, abuse of power, abuse of discretion, etc. So the whole object is different. In fact, if the same exemptions which are kept in RTI are kept here, then the whole object fails. Because how do you disclose things which are kept secret? The whole idea is to stop corruption. So the whole object is different. The question is, therefore, why have these, why have these exceptions? You are having these exceptions, and by these exceptions, you are killing and destroying completely the whistleblowers, the idea of whistleblowers to expose corruption. And I'll give you one instance. If these exemptions are in place, you can't have Watergate, you can't have 2G scam, you can't have coal scams, you won't have even small scams, like, etc. Like, uh, I think this, uh, what was it? Uh, the 2G scam. 2G uh, scam. Yeah, the coal scam. Or the Radia, 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 scam. Radia scam. They will all become unavailable by virtue of the amendments which are now proposed. Ma'am, uh, ma I'll bring you in on this. See, the correct understanding, as Sir explained it, is RTI was right to information, which is seeking information for your own use or for public interest, right? Whistleblower granted protection to anyone blowing the lid of a corruption, correct? Is it correct for the government <coughs> to confuse the two and have cross-balancing of the exemptions. Is that, is that what was perceived when Whistleblower Act was initially brought in? Is that the idea? Look, uh, the way we see it, this is a complete attempt by the government to obfuscate matters. This is essentially just causing confusion because, like was rightly mentioned, the Right to Information Act is an act by which information is to be put in the public domain. Mm -hmm. This particular act, the Whistleblower Protection Act, is for somebody who's within the government or outside the government who has certain sensitive information and they are going to make a complaint to the government itself. Now, there is no question of the information being made public. So the exemptions that are being made in the RTI Act, which are to prevent certain kinds of information being made public, don't apply here because mm -hmm. the whistleblower is not making the information public. They are just making a complaint to a competent authority within the government. So there is absolutely no justification for having the exemptions of the Right to Information Act copied and pasted into a whistleblower protection law. Mm -hmm. What was the whistleblower protection law needed for? The whistleblower protection law is needed for two sorts of people. One are the traditional whistleblowers, who are people who are within the system, within the government, people like Satendra Dubey, mm -hmm. many other people, who have information which shows there is corruption. When they go and file a complaint, they are either threatened or killed. In order to give them protection, there was a need for a whistleblower protection law. The other sort of people are the RTI applicants, who now, even outside the system, have access to information and using that, know that there is corruption and can file a complaint and ask for certain kind of protection. Mm. What this set of exemptions and what this amendment bill is doing is that it is saying effectively that we will not protect the traditional whistleblower. Got it. They are saying that people within the system, if you don't have information using the RTI Act, and you have information because the file comes to you, it shows to you that there is corruption, your complaint will not be inquired into. In fact, this particular amendment, and I think this is one of the key issues, in the original law that was passed by the parliament, there is a very clear provision that the Official Secrets Act will not apply to people who are making a complaint. This amendment law takes that provision away. This bill basically says that if you make a disclosure, under the Official Secrets Act, you can be tried. Correct. So, so there is an imprisonment of up to 13 or 14 years under the Official Secrets Act. Why would anybody then go and file a, a complaint and a disclosure? This is not encouraging 
whistle blowing this is discouraging whistle blowing sir sir what do you think is left of the whistle blower bill now or the law after these exemptions do we have a whistle blower protection program or a law still existing or is it i mean what's the status uh, according to me the if the amendment goes through it is through sir it is through it is passed by yeah. both houses no no not no by, by lok sabha but Lok's it is eventually i is eventually going to be passed you see the whole idea and there are un guidelines on this there should be no loopholes here not only there are lot of loopholes but the holes are as big as the delhi roads so you have a national highway now running through the act by which the exemptions take away anything which was required to be done that's number one so in my view this is a dead letter now once the amendments go through people have will have to resort to other means for bringing corruption or controlling corruption like with modern technology you can have photocopies of documents and you go to the media or you go to some print media or the tv media or somewhere else to a political party because that will give you better protection than this <laughs> and there are so many loopholes here now that it has become a meaningless law it will only provide some more jobs for the bureaucrats time for us to head into a break when we come back we will talk about some more exemptions that have been proposed by the government Welcome back. The proposed provisions in the Whistleblower Bill 2015 exempts public disclosure if the information relates to commercial confidence, trade secrets, and intellectual property. If disclosure of such information could harm the competitors. No person will be required to answer any question. produce any document or render any assistance in any inquiry under the law if it impacts the subjects that the government seeks to exempt the competent authority inquiring into the matter must refer the disclosure to the appropriate authority of the central or state government to ascertain whether it is exempt from disclosure the decision of government is binding A certificate by an authority of the state or central government with regard to the above will have to be issued in all such cases. See, all the amendments are not justified because if you gives in such details exceptions, then it becomes very difficult for the whistleblower to that insider man, the Mister Insider, feels that I will not be able to get justice. because the competent authority being an insider person himself will put my complaint and allegations in some exception or the other the other provisions where no disclosure will be allowed includes information which is with a person relating in his capacity as a trustee information received in confidence from a foreign government can also not be disclosed information that can endanger the life or physical safety of a person or identifying the source of information given in confidence for law enforcement or security purpose is also not allowed no disclosure may be made if the information impedes the process of investigation apprehension prosecution of offenders or if the disclosure of personal information may cause unwarranted invasion of privacy if he blows the whistle and these are matters which affect any of these categories which are now exempted that is includes national security then he will not have the protection under the whistle blowers act in other words if it affects national security or if it affects certain commercial secrets and then he cannot make any kind of declaration expecting the protection which is accorded to whistle blowers under the act one important thing missing in the bill is that the government does not define what would lead to the victimization of the whistle blower 
Also, if the whistleblower faces retaliatory action from the government, how would he seek redress? The proposed amendments also attempts to discourage leaks by officers of the government. The bill states that if the offence has been committed with the consent of or is attributable to any neglect on the part of any officer other than the head of the department, then the concerned officer will also be considered to be guilty of that offence. Dipali Pandit for Rajya Sabha Television. The government seems to be tightening the information flow, except for the uh, officers of certain category, all other officers will now be held accountable. My question to you, ma'am, straight away. Consultation before this bill was brought into parliament. What was the status? You were part of the entire setup. How did it happen and how quickly did it suddenly be tabled? Uh, look, the whistleblower's protection law was passed and was given assent of the president in May 2014. Till May 2015, the law was not operationalized. At least three more whistleblowers were killed in the interim and there was a huge demand from civil society to say please operationalize the law that the parliament has passed. We constantly filed right to information applications trying to find out why the law was not being operationalized. What we were told is that the government is proposing to amend the law and there was no news of what the amendments would be like. So despite attempts to find out what amendments were going to be made, including RTI applications being filed on the subject, there was no information provided to people, to public in general, on what the uh, amendments were going to be. The first time that anybody saw the bill was when it was tabled in the parliament. Mm -hmm. So there was no transparency in the process of bringing about these amendments and there was absolutely no public consultation. Mm -hmm. So for example, the National Campaign for People's Right to Information, mm -hmm. through a consultative process with people, had drawn up a set of draft rules for operationalizing the whistleblower's law in which we had suggested that when a whistleblower makes a complaint, it should be done in a sealed envelope to the competent authority, which would take care of any kinds of leaks because it would just ensure that the whistleblower is sealing the information, whatever they want to give to the government and giving it to the competent authority, which the government itself has put in place. Mm -hmm. Now, if only that was done, all the concerns that the government seems to be talking about, about uh, security of the country, sovereignty trade of the secrets, country, privacy. trade secrets, all of that would have in any case gone in a sealed envelope to the Prime Minister or whoever else the competent authority is. Now, why did the government need to come up with all these exemptions and say that a whistleblower will not be given protection, no inquiry will be done into that complaint if there are any information which relate to exemptions in that complaint? So first of all, because the whole process was completely non-transparent, non-consultative, the government has come up with a completely absurd set of amendments, which make no sense if the government is actually intending to protect whistleblowers of any kind. Sir, the competent authority, how do you understand the definition as it stands of the competent authority? Because that is where the disclosure is supposed to be made. And if that competent authority is part of the government, then... Where is the question of, you know, these exemptions? I think you have hit the nail on the head. There should not be so many competent authorities at all. There should be only one central independent authority which can go into the matter. Then there may be some consultations before, say, taking action against a minister or taking action against the high court judge or something like that. But you must have a central authority independently who receives all these public uh, interest disclosures. And that was the model which was followed as a guideline by the CVC. Mm -hmm. Because earlier, before the act, all these complaints would go to the CVC and the CVC would deal with it. That's one. Secondly, what is the reason why a person is called a whistleblower? Correct. In the old days, in England, there used to be a bobby, mm -hmm. a policeman. And whenever there is an alarm or something goes wrong, he used to blow a whistle. Something is going wrong, I'm blowing the whistle. So it was called whistleblower. 
Now the amendments and even the act is so defective that apart from blowing the whistle, the whistle itself has been blown away. The whistle itself has been blown away. And look at this, for instance, an exemption which says that information, the disclosure of which would prejudicially affect the strategic, scientific, or economic interests of the state. Everything comes in. Everything comes in. And who is to decide this? Some secretary of the government is to give a certificate. Yeah. So between the two, <laughs> what is the use of this act at all? It has no use at all now. In fact, I would like to yeah, add yeah. something to what you've just mentioned. All right to information applicants at some stage of the or the other would have gone through exactly the problem that Mr. Devan is talking about. When an RTI application is filed and the government does not want to give information, they will invoke one of the exemptions, correctly or incorrectly, and deny information. And very often, clauses like personal information, like sovereignty, economic interest of the government are just randomly quoted to not give information. Now, the same sort of uh, exemptions are being given in the whistleblower's law. So when a whistleblower is putting his life on risk or her life or at risk and coming and filing a complaint, all that somebody needs to do, and this somebody is, some, is an officer which is appointed by the government itself. Mm -hmm. So the government officer just needs to certify that this information is exempted and therefore your complaint will not be inquired into, thereby making a mockery of the entire law. So this law which is, I mean, which was extremely important because people like Manjunath, Satendra mm -hmm. Dubey, many other people across the country have been trying to blow the whistle and have been getting attacked and threatened, needed protection, has been rendered totally toothless. Yeah. What the government needed to do if it was really to completely committed to its anti-corruption agenda, which it said that we, we will fight corruption at all cost, was to protect those who blow the lid off corruption. Mm -hmm. And even in the RTI Act, since that is the one that the, law, uh, the government is quoting, even in the RTI Act, in case of exempted organizations also, any information that relates to corruption or human rights violation has to be provided by the government. So there is nothing under the RTI Act also which prevents information related to corruption or human rights violation which is covered under the whistleblower's law. Right. Uh, moving on. My colleague Dipali Pandit spoke to Colin Gonzalez, senior advocate, Supreme Court, and tried to get his point of view. What is the protection available to the whistleblowers if they blow the lid off irregularities of subjects that have been exempted? It's illegal. It's contrary to the Act. The Act specifically says it. You're making a public disclosure. The Act specifically says you shall not. Therefore, for breach of the Act, you'll be punished two years or whatever imprisonment, etc. You can be punished for, for disclosing something which is actually in the public interest, but because the stupid law says, this absolutely idiotic law says, that you shall not disclose. So then he'll be punished. You'll go to jail for doing something in public interest. Do you think all the amendments are justified? And what amendments, according to you, are not really required? Not a single amendment is justified. The entire thing is focused on 41A, which is you shall not disclose. You shall not, shall not, shall not, shall not. You have a Whistleblowers Act for disclosure and you have an amendment which says you shall not, shall not, shall not, shall not, shall not, shall not. What remains? What remains? Thank you, sir and ma'am, for joining us on this discussion. It's time for us to end the show. You can email your suggestions and comments to law.rstv at gmail.com. You can also watch our shows on the RSTV page of YouTube. We'll be back with a new issue and a new episode. Keep watching. Raj Sabha TV.